So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about different print on demand sites you guys need to consider when prepping for Q4. If you don't already know by now, Q4 is the fourth quarter of the year where most sales are made. Hi guys, my name is Phil and welcome to the Money Game YouTube channel. I make print on demand content to both motivate and to also give you guys tips and tricks on how to make money through print on demand. Now today's video I'll be going through a variation of print on demand sites giving you some pros, giving you some cons and just letting you guys know which ones you should be trying and which ones you should be experimenting with in preparation for Q4. Now I'm going to be doing this as a part one so at the end of this video if you do go on to enjoy it I want you guys to let me know if you want a part two down in the comment section but just before we do get into the video for anyone who might be new to the channel we're currently trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of 2020. It's a bit of a big goal, but I can't do it without your help. So if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bells so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. If you subscribe, you become a part of the TMG community and the members in the TMG communities are getting sales pretty much every day. We have people here on YouTube in the YouTube comments that are getting sales and also on my free to join private Facebook group with people getting sales and consistent sales over there as well so if you subscribe you definitely will not regret joining this community also for anyone that's new i have a free print on demand starter guide that's linked in the description all the information that helped me to pretty much get my first few sales when i started with print on demand are in that however if you're someone that's looking to make this more into a full-time thing and fast track your way onto print on demand success i have a paid guide that's linked down in the description as well and that will pretty much help you maximize your print on demand sales now what sites should we be using what sites should we be uploading our designs on what sites should we be bearing in mind when it comes to q4 now there's quite a few but in this video i'm going to be talking about five sites that i think you guys should be trying out that i think you guys should be uploading your designs on to if you're not doing already and these are sites that are proven all these sites work i've used them i've had some sort of success on all of them which is why i'm sharing this information with you guys now i'm going to start off with one of the main ones and it's Redbubble. Now, most of the people that watch my videos on this channel know that I talk about Redbubble, but when it comes to the pros, what are the benefits of actually using Redbubble? Now, firstly, you don't need to be approved to become a Redbubble seller in comparison to sites like Merch by Amazon. At the same time, that means that there's also a lot more competition on Redbubble, but it's a lot easier to get started with Redbubble and to start making sales, which is one thing I really like. Second thing with Redbubble is that it has inbuilt features, inbuilt tools that allows you to actually see what is trending. So when you're doing your research in regards of what you should be making designs for, it's a lot easier than on other sites. And through using the Redbubble A to Z method, which I've talked about many times before, and for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's literally when you go on the search bar, you type in a letter and Redbubble suggests to you three trending items that usually have a little arrow on them. Great thing about using methods like that through Redbubble is that it will help you find low competition niches. The more time you put into that, the more niches you find, the higher chance you have of actually getting a lot of sales. And in preparation for Q4, it's actually a really good inbuilt tool within Redbubble that's great to use which is one of the main reasons Redbubble makes this list. The cons for Redbubble include the fact that there can be a lot of high competition on popular niches. When trends are new, people jump onto them quite quickly. As once again, there's a lot of people on Redbubble and due to the fact that people don't have to be approved to use Redbubble, the competition will always be higher. There's some of the cons, but overall, I think Redbubble is a great site to use. And if you're not already uploading to it, you should be. Next up, we have Zazzle. Now, a lot of people look past Zazzle. They don't really think that, you know, you can get that many sales on Zazzle. And getting straight into it, pros of using Zazzle is the fact that it allows customization. Now, if you were to create, for example, birthday cards or Christmas cards, you can actually leave a spot where people can customize a name. So if it's a birthday card, it could say happy birthday to insert name here. And then the customer can actually add name there. That's one of the best features I love in regards of Zazzle. That customization feature 
really allows you to increase the amount of sales you can get, especially if you're creating things like greetings cards in relation to trends. The Zazzle myself, I use it mainly with greetings cards. Other people say it's good for creating wedding invitation cards or invitation cards and postcards and stuff like that. But I stick to things like birthday cards and coming onto Q4, I'll be using Christmas cards, things like that. So if you're not using Zazzle, definitely use it and focus on things like greetings cards and that type of thing. They have a lot of products on the sites. I would always advise you guys to activate your designs on all products, but the main ones you should be focusing on are greetings cards. And the main downside of Zazzle is the fact that when you create an account and you're setting it up, it can be a bit tricky to try and get your head around it, to actually try and get posting your designs. But there's many tutorials and many videos out there. And if you guys want me to make one for you, I can do that. But with Zazzle, I feel like that's the main downside. Because once you actually find your trend or find your specific niche after testing out various niches, you see that Zazzle is a very, very great site to use. Next up, we have Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing or Amazon KDP as it's known. Now, this is a great site mainly because it's linked up with Amazon and Amazon is the biggest marketplace online. When we actually talk about the benefits of using Amazon KDP, the first one is that you don't have to get approved in the same way as you need to get approved by Merch by Amazon. Merch by Amazon could be tricky. The waiting time for getting approved can be a bit long. But with KDP, it's easier to pretty much get straight in, to get straight uploading, and to start actually creating your portfolio of designs on Amazon. And once again, if you're finding popular enough trends, that will look good on book covers, whether that's low content or no content. For those who don't know, low content would be maybe a planner that has writing at the start of it that says this planner belongs to whoever. No content could just be a book with a design on the front and then just blank pages inside. Once again, if you guys want to know more information about that, if you want to see me make more videos in regards to things like that, let me know down in the comment section. But yeah, KDP is a very, very good print on demand site. But like any site, it does have its downsides. When you do start actually putting your designs onto KDP, your designs need to be reviewed before they can be put live. This could take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. As of now, that's the waiting time I'm seeing in regards of designs. Whether that will change in the future, I don't know. If you're someone who's trying to prepare for the final quarter of the year where most of the sales do come, it'll be great to start on KDP now, mainly because even though there's a waiting period when you're putting your designs up, by the time we get to October, November, December, you could have a large library of designs that have been accepted that are ready to go. And with KDP, I can assure you guys, you have a solid revenue stream if you start working on it now. Before I move on from this, I just want to say once again, Amazon is the biggest marketplace online. The low or no content book covers or books that you upload to KDP will show up on Amazon on all markets. So it's not just the US market or the UK market, all markets will have access to the designs you put on these book covers. So if that's not enough to convince you, I don't know what is. The next stop, we have TeePublic. Now, good thing about TeePublic is that it's a very easy site to use. It's easy to upload designs onto it, whether it's from your laptop, PC, or your phone. It's very, very, very easy to do that. TeePublic also does a lot of sales, which increases the chances of sellers getting more sales. The profit, unfortunately, is lowered when they do do sales, but with the amount of products you do then sell in comparison to one that isn't sales, it near enough balances each other out. And they are just a couple of benefits of using TeePublic. But on the downside, as of recent times, it's been a lot harder to actually get accounts approved on TeePublic. In the past, you just create an account, start uploading your designs, and they'll show up in the marketplace. But as of now, you create an account, you start posting your design and your design sometimes won't show up. And if you don't hit, they're now saying 25 designs, most of your designs won't show up. And even after 25 designs, I'm noticing for some people, their designs aren't showing up. And that's because TeePublic for some reason 
are picking and choosing who they approve and who they don't approve and this is something they never really used to do so that's a downside of tea public i would definitely say try it out because you could be one of the lucky ones and actually have your account approved after you upload your first 25 designs but that's something to bear in mind when trying to actually go into the tea public route and trying to actually create a revenue stream through tea public there's a lot of good money in tea public to finish off part one we have spreadshirt now this is one a lot of people don't really talk about and i'll explain why i think a lot of people don't really talk about spreadshirt and for those who don't know spreadshirt is similar to sites like t public redbubble zazzle you put your design on and your design is put over a number of different products now it's great because obviously people have access to a large library of products with the same design which always increases your chances of selling and if you have designs that are already working through other print on demand sites it's a great site to just put those designs onto there as well but the downside is that if you're using spreadshirt as a non-pay member so if you're just using a normal free account you are limited to 50 design upload slots now i feel like that's probably why a lot of people don't talk about spreadshirt because there's a cap and the amount of designs you can put on it when you're using a free account but you can definitely make use of this if you're seeing that you have certain designs that are doing well on redbubble or if you're seeing that you're in a certain niche on a print on demand site that a lot of people aren't in that's doing well you can take those designs put them onto spreadshirt they might not sell straight away but you see every now and again you get sales i mean that's what i experience every now and again i get random sales through spreadshirt every little does help and i thought i'll just throw it into this video because i want you guys to have as many different streams as you can when it comes to using different print on demand sites now a great thing about all of these sites that i've spoke about is that they allow you to get organic traffic without needing to hit any crazy sort of requirements now that is it for the end of part one if you guys want me to do a part two of more print on demand sites that i would suggest for you guys to use especially prepping for the fourth quarter make sure to let me know if you're still watching and you've made it to this point of the video comment down below of the five print on demand sites i mentioned which one is your personal favorite i'd love to read through your comments drop a like if you haven't already and we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year so if you can hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell it would really help the channel get to that goal nevertheless always remember that everything is rigged in your favor and manifest success <laughs>